Good morning, everybody. Um, for those who don't know me, I'm Owen. I'm one of the Forge leaders. And today I'm going to take you through Psalm 44. First thing before we start, um, I'm going to ask the question, is it okay to lament to God? And lament means to express grief and sorrow and maybe complain so I've split this up into four pieces, um, and I'll go into which one, which parts I've, I've I've split it into in a minute. But for context, it is clear here that um, the psalmist are going th they're going through um, a time of um, suffering, calamity, and it looks like their enemies have kind of thwarted them or destroyed them. Um, and this is a hymn. Um, a, a lament to God. So like I said before, a lament is an expression of grief. These people regard themselves as chosen ones of God. So God's chosen people, um, descendants of those who were taken out from slavery in Egypt and um, and defeated Jericho um, and David who, um, who destroyed, who defeated Philistines and so on. And God has been on their side all this time. They've, um, they've acknowledged that this is um, God's doing, not theirs. So I've split this into four parts. Um, the first part is verse 1 to 8, and, and I've called this um, a reminiscing part. Uh, part 2 is verse 9 to 16, and I've called that rejection. Part 3, verses 17 to 22, confusion. And part four, verses 23 to 26, is pleading. So part one, we look at reminiscing. So the, the psalm opens up with um, the writer telling God of all the amazing things he's done for his ancestors, for their ancestors. Um, and again, like I say, remember these people are, are consider themselves the children of God and God's chosen people. And therefore, they inherit God's blessing. And um, read in the Old Testament how God has delivered them from all their enemies. And these historical stories would have been passed down from father to son, um, to the families, and, um, and, and, and also from rabbi to um, their congregation. Um, which is where, in verse 1, it says, O oh God, we have heard with our ears our fall that father has told us. This means that you drove out all the Gentiles from the lands of Canaan, which is where they settled, and planted their, his chosen people there instead. It's clear that the psalmist knows that it's not by their hand that, they are being, uh, that they've won these battles, but it's by God, in verse 3, for not by their sword did they win the land. In this stanza or part, the psalmist is basically saying, look, I know how great you are because you have proven that time and time again throughout history. Um, they know full well who is responsible for their past victories. And then he says, verse 6, for not in my bow do I trust. So the psalmist affirms that he puts his trust in God. Now part two is quite a strange one for me in terms of a, a worship song. Um in this part, they are, seems to be complaining or lamenting. Um, but I suppose they are just expressing their grief to God. And straight away in verse 9, he says, But you have rejected us and disgraced us and have not gone with our, with our enemies. Sorry, with our armies. But what really sticks out to me is verse 11 to 13. So the psalmist is not saying that, he has, that God has sold uh, their sold them to their enemies for a delicious jelly custard and cream layer dessert. Um, they see they they saying that they feel vulnerable and feel like they've been sold out, shall we say, cheaply. Um, they feel vulnerable, weak, and in need of protection. So they say, "You have made us like like sheep for slaughter." Verse eleven. But. For me, what I find most applicable is verse 13. You have you made us the taunt of our neighbours. Have you ever felt like this as a Christian? I've been taunted quite a bit. Um, 
I've, I've been, um, I suppose, I'll ask the question, have you been taught it by those at school, um, at work, on the media, on, on social media, sorry, um, or even in your own family? I don't know. Um, I know I've been taunted in the past by friends, family. And just the other day, a so-called friend of mine on social media um, called me a bigot because of, I believe in God, I believe in the Bible, and I follow Christ. And that really hurt. I felt bad because I thought he was my friend. Um, obviously, he has different views to me, but he has to call me a bigot, which is quite ironic because, therefore, he's a bigot. But I'm not going to go into that. And I even saw that the Archbishop of Canterbury getting ridiculed on 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 Facebook the other day um, when um, I think Channel 4 asked um, Justin Welby, um, do you think that the NHS has become the new religion? Which is a stupid question, to be honest. But um, what Justin said was that he believes that the NHS is a blessing from God. And then in the comments section afterwards, I see people saying, well, what does God have to say about COVID-19? And um, you're, you're, you are a um, wicked man or um, for believing in God, a God who does this, who, who destroys, who kills people and, you know, whatever. You. And this relates to verse 14, you have made us a laughing stock among the peoples. So, I mean, what I want to say, though, is that um, here, even the Archbishop is getting ridiculed. But more, 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 uh, moreover, that we know that even Jesus was persecuted. The perfect man, God made flesh, was persecuted, suffered, and then died for us. So in verse 14, you have made a laughing stock among the peoples. Um, it's probably saying that people um, are saying to them, where is your God now in this time of you know, being, you know, all these enemies are saying, ha, ah, where are you got? Where's your God now? You've rested on, on his laurels for a long time and we've destroyed you and all that kind of stuff. Can you relate to this? I know I can. In part three, um, 17 to 22, confusion. I, I call this part confusion because the psalmist um, doesn't really know what they have done to deserve what is happening to them. Everything that's happening um, to us happens even though we have been faithful to God. That's uh, one of the things it says. As if the reason because God is punishing them. So God is punishing them. Verse 17. All this has come upon us, although we have not forgotten you and we have not been false to your covenant. Despite that, you have ruined us. Verse 19. So despite the fact that they've done this that they've they've um they've not forgotten god and um, turned to him um he's ruined them somehow and into um part four then we look at um pleading when i first read this passage i thought how dare they talk to god this way we always get taught we need to talk be reverent to god we need to be respectful to god we need to fear god and um, but then when I re reread it again and saw um, what it what it what, what's he saying, it resonated to me, especially this this part of the of the of the book of the of the passage. I find it interesting that the psalmist thinks God is sleeping, <laughs> or has forgotten them. When well, verse twenty three says, "Awake, why are you sleeping, O Lord?" Verse twenty four, "Why do you forget our affliction and oppression?" But what this last part is, is a bold plea to God to come into the situation now and sort it out. He's reaffirming that he trusts God, that he wants him to come in and sort it out. So that was a bit of a skim through this meaning. It's a big, big, big psalm. Um, I encourage you to go through it again yourself and pick out a few things see what they mean and do a bit of research maybe post on the comments after this to say what you think has been said i think all of us relate to this passage i know i have pondered um similar things i've 
thought to God, why, why have you done this? Um, why do, do, do I deserve this? Why are bad things happening to me? Do, is it because he's punishing me? Even when it seems like we have not done anything to deserve it. Have you sang a similar psalm to Psalm 44? Why me? We can know, not know why these things happen. We cannot hope to understand God other than what he's revealed to us in the Bible. For us to get to know him and have that relationship with him. And Proverbs 3 verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. So one thing we can learn from the Psalms is that they didn't turn away from God. They didn't say, um, say right, all these bad things are happening to me, um, therefore I'm going to turn my back on God. Um, I don't believe in God, I'm not going to follow him, I'm, I'm ignoring him, do my own thing. No. Rather than turn away from God, they put the trust in him even more. They plead for him, they prayed to him alone. So back at the start I asked, is it okay to whinge or lament to God? And the psalmist teaches that it's okay to cry out to him with our griefs and our sorrows because we are returning to God. We're putting all our worry and our anxiety to him. And finally, I want to say that although we suffer here, even though we are Christians and it will be ridiculed, called names, laughed at for, feeling, for believing in God, remember God knows how it feels to suffer. Jesus was despised, tortured and died the most horrific death. So therefore God understands what suffering is like for us. So I hope this has been um, a good study, encouraging. Post on the um, comments below what you think um, to this passage. Um, if I've said something you think is wrong, let me rebuke me. I'm fine with that. I'm, I'm fine to be challenged. Um, I'm sorry this has been a really long video, but I think it's really poignant to concentrate on these things, um, especially this time. Um, it's amazing that even though 3,000 years ago these Psalms were written, they're still applicable today. Um, every single one of them that we've read so far has been applicable to today. So thanks very much. Have a fantastic day. I'm just going to finish with a prayer. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you that we can come to you with our prayers, our anxiety, our worries, um, our laments, and we thank you that you sort it all out for us and you've got the plan. We trust in you, Lord. Help us to trust in you and not lean on our own understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.